Okay, so what I want to talk about in this video is how we can adapt HydraBoost to your A body uh, DIY style, right? So I was searching for brackets and they were expensive or non existent. So uh, you're all familiar with this. This is if you want T T56 uh, master cylinder only. So you stack this and then you run a manual uh, brake setup or stack brackets or whatever. Uh, let's say you want Hydra Boost only, then you're going to want these brackets here. Or I have a third option here, which is T56 and Hydra Boost. So I want to cover all this in this video. Okay, so in this video, I have designed three different brackets for an, a GM A body um, that can help you save money by um, going with these brackets versus what's available on the marketplace. So. On my build, I'm doing a T56 swap, so I need to mount the clutch uh, master cylinder, and also I want to do Hydra Boost, so there's bracketry involved for both those options. Now, first of all, if you want to go Hydra Boost, there are kits out there, seven to $900 for the kits, okay? Now, the Hydra Boost unit alone costs $200, so where's that extra cost? Well, you got a special push rod that they market, bracket, um, and probably lines so i'm not talking about the lines but anyway that's a lot of money for bracketry okay and a push rod that can be easily solved so in this video i'm going to show you how i went about all that but anyway there is a person that sells a billet bracket the bracket's 100 bucks and i think they're out of stock you know i i don't see them pushing or selling it too often too much anymore i mean they made a big push and they were selling them and now they're actually hard to find so the website's down and everything. So anyway, the bracket's a hundred bucks, but then you need a special socket that's a hundred bucks. So that's two hundred bucks right there, and then um, that doesn't take care of the T56 option. So I would need to buy another hundred dollar bracket. So that's three hundred dollars in brackets and tools just to mount this thing. Well, what I'm going to show you today uh, requires no special tools. I bought a special crow foot tool for fifteen bucks, and that's all you need to mount the Hydra Boost to this bracket, and then you can cut and weld a push rod on. That's pretty easy to do. And then you're, you're ready to go. And lines are pretty easy to come across. You can buy a line kit uh, for the power steering hoses. So three options, T56 only, Hydra Boost with T56, and then just Hydra Boost only. So we'll cover all of those. And these are still prototype brackets, meaning I got a set made for myself, test fitting it all. I'm gonna test drive the car and everything, make sure everything's cool. And then if anyone wants these, I can make them available. Uh, you know, I'll do another run uh, so you can buy them as well. And so how I wanna do this is I want, I'm gonna put like a wait list up here, okay? If you wanna buy one of these brackets, get on the wait list. And what I'll do is after all my testing is complete, um, I will let you know what the pricing will be uh, based on how many people want it and then uh, how long it'll take. It'll probably take three to four weeks to make brackets, but that's in a few months after this car is road ready and after some testing. So I, I think it's pretty cool because um, like I said, a Hydra Boost unit's 200 bucks. Bra these brackets are going to be well under $100 for sure. And then you just get a line kit, weld a push rod on, and bam, you're up and running with Hydra Boost, and you don't have to spend seven to $900 for a kit or you know retail uh, or whatever. So again, that link's going to be up here. Make sure you watch the whole video. I kind of jump around a little bit, but you'll get the gist of everything that is needed to uh, swap this in your car. GM a body okay I have two hydro boost units here and I want to talk about them for a little bit what I have here is for a 95 uh, Chevy Astro van and over here this is for a 2011 Silverado 2500 um, as far as I can tell the actual hydro boost units are the same the difference being is the bracket and this this section right here looks a little different but that doesn't really matter uh, the push rod is pretty much the same. So, bracket. That's literally the only difference, and we are scrapping that and going to do a new bracket anyway. So, 
I don't care about that. Another thing I want to point out is this one here is remanufactured. So it was on a car, they pulled it, it was rebuilt, and you can see that it has black paint on the nitrogen, or I'm sorry, on the pressurized canister. And this paint is kind of crappy. And I paid $225, you know, because I had to pay a core charge as well. And this guy here was like 210 So this is br a brand new AC Delco unit, and it is brand spanking new. And I'll get to another thing. But um, the part number for this guy is 52-7333. So that's a car done part number or whatever. Okay, so all the fittings are the same. You got your return. You got your pr high pressure right here. Everything looks the same. Another reason, and the reason I bought this is because here's a big one. See this right here? This is all empty. It doesn't come with the push rod and the centering device for here, okay? You have to use that off your old unit. Well, I, I don't have that, right? And I'm not going to the junkyard to search for that. And I found someone on eBay selling it, $60 for a little push rod and a little spring and all that. So I would have to add another $60 if I wanted to make it easy on myself or go to the junkyard, which is time and money. So I am returning this because the paint, it's missing parts, and it's remanufactured. Screw that, okay? So over here is this brand new AC Delco unit, and you can see here it has the centering device and this retainer and the push rods in here. The paint is much higher quality, and then this guy here is brand new and it's anodized, and it just looks much nicer than uh, a reman unit. Okay, so um, we're going to go with this one. And since the bracket is really the only difference and we're scrapping it, so we're just going to pull the bracket off and, and use it. So again, this was a 2011 Silverado 2500. And, you know, all the cars that come with these hydro boosters are probably the same. The difference being a different part number is the bracketry and maybe this guy here, which we have to modify anyway. So really, this guy... And the bracket is probably the only difference between all these units. Okay, these things come with a sticker. Do not remove this pedal rod because you'll destroy it. So we'll modify that later. But anyway, we need to get this plate off, okay, because we're not going to need it. So there's a snap ring on here, and then there's a 1 and 7 eighths uh, nut. And as you can see, you can't put a socket on it. So the easiest thing to do is do an open-end wrench, or in my case, uh, I bought this crow foot for 12 bucks, okay? Next problem is these studs are in the way, okay? You could probably do something like this, and it'd probably come off, but these are probably pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of these studs off, and that should give me enough clearance. All right, I got it mounted in a vise. Uh, now we'll just try to crack it loose. Sucker's tight, man. Okay, so here's what the setup looks like installed. You can see that we have this push rod, which is an eyelet, and it does us no good because we need to go to a threaded clevis. So I bought a new clevis, and it came with this uh, from inline tube uh, because my, my pin was all worn out and whatnot. So anyway, if we look here, you know, you can push this guy sideways. So just get it out of the way, but kind of line it up. And if we go like that, um, you can see I made several marks on this guy. So what I plan on doing is cutting everything at the blue marks. So this here is threaded all the way to here. So what I plan on doing is having a little stub on this push rod, which will fit in here, weld it up, and then cut it here, you know, we'll cut it here, cut it there. So let's go ahead and do that, and then this guy... Uh, it should solve all that. Okay, here's a closer look of what I'm gonna do. Uh, this is threaded, female threads, all the way down to here, right? 
So if I take a zip tie, you know, check this out. So it goes all the way to here. So it's pretty much full depth, right? So if I cut this guy here, and I cut this guy here, what I plan on doing is jamming this shaft into this counter bore and then welding it here at this line. So it'll be strong because it's inserted in there, welded, and this thing is trapped. It has nowhere to go. So from a safety standpoint, it'll be great. And then of course this is too long, so I'll just cut it right there. So let me make my cuts and then we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm gonna weld. All right, so here's what I got. <clears throat> so cut this off, right? Chopped a little off here. Now the inside here, the ID was too small. Uh, it's not threaded all the way. So what I did is I took a 3 8 drill and drilled all the way to the bottom, okay? So if you look here, <clears throat> and then I just sanded this and filed it just so it's clean for welding. But if I look at this, if I make a mark right here, you can see how much engagement is in here, okay? And there's a stop here. Once you weld this and you're pushing on the clevis, there's nowhere for this to fail. It's safe, you know, breaking's gotta be safe. So what we'll go ahead and do is just weld that up and call it a day. Okay, so here it is all welded up. Uh, pretty simple, I just MIG weld it, burn that in. Um, and again, it has good engagement, it's safe and whatnot. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so let's put the bracket on, which is this guy right here. Uh, and you'll notice that I had to grind away at this flange here. So let me talk about that real quick. Uh, originally, I was just gonna, this is the 3D printed part. I was just gonna do a flat plate. Um, and at the last second, I decided to add, it some, add some flanges for stiffness so this won't bend, right? Well, I didn't check clearances and, and as a result, um, I got some of this here. Uh, you can see that this flange would uh, interfere here with the body of the hydro boost. So I'm gonna have to elite, at a minimum delete, or I'm sorry, remove this flange on the bottom here for the next run and maybe just have a flange on top. Maybe, maybe I will get rid of both flanges. I haven't decided yet, but my concern is that this may flex when you're, when you're hammering on the brakes. So anyway, I need to look at that, but in any case, uh, what I wanted here in this whole design is this to be flat so that way it's simple to put the nut on and use no special tools. Um, we just simply go back and use this crow foot um, because you know there's other brackets out there but you need a special $100 socket um, in order to um, do that. So this, this is nice. Um, you just use the crow foot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and torque down that nut and then we'll put the snap ring on there as well. All right, so let's put our clutch and brake pedal in real quick. So we got these plastic uh, little bushings and I put a little dabs of grease on here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and insert this really quick. So again, my car was an auto and I'm converting to manual, so I had to buy these pedals new. Okay, and we got our little special clip that goes on the end here. Okay. Okay, so at this point, you obviously have a couple options, right? Here's your T56 and Hydra Boost combo, or if you wanna just do Hydra Boost only, right? And then of course we have the T56 only version as well. Okay, so this obviously would go, you know, you'd have this in the car and the firewall would be sandwiched here, but that's that's T56 only. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this guy here, which is Hydra Boost only. So let me go ahead and put, um, this is just mock-up, so let's just put two nuts on here, corner to corner. Okay, so that's on there nice and tight. Okay, so then you would feed this guy in. Now, you can either have this guy clocked like this, or you can spin it around 180 this way. Okay, this bracket is universal. This is all symmetric, so that's another nice option. You can easily clock this whichever way you want. 
Um, I think most guys will clock it this way, so the reservoir is pointing up, and reason for that is for a valve cover clearance. Okay, so now we have bolts. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, we have to seal this somehow to the firewall. So what I have here is this is a stock uh, seal. I don't know what it's called, um, but I, do, I did have to do some trimming. So you can see here, I cut it with scissors. I had to trim a little off to get a decent fit here. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, standard 3 8 bolts here. We'll just put a few of these in. You need a couple hands to do this. Okay, so that's all snug, and that's how it looks. Um, this seal, like I said, works okay. Okay, so that's Hydra Boost only. Um, here's a top view. So that seal's okay. I mean, and one thing I was thinking of is how can we cap this? So that's one other option. Um, you know, I can I can bend this flange back and it'd be a cover um, to hide all this and the white thing sticks out like a sore thumb. But overall, I mean, you know, it works. Okay, here's a side view, uh, seven degree tilt. And this tilt will allow top or bottom hole on the brake pedal. So let's go ahead and zoom in and Get a look at that. All right, so here's the bottom view. Um, you can see that you can either get to the top uh, hole here, um, and of course you got the turn. You know, you just turn this to adjust the pedal height, or it could even you can even get the uh, lower hole at this angle. So you're probably wondering which one do you want to run. Um, a lot of the Hydra Boost setups run the top hole, which is manual, even though the lower one is for power. And so that's how they usually set up. So you get more leverage as you go here, more force um, and whatnot. So I'm gonna play with both options. I'll probably try the top hole first because um, that's what all the uh, expensive kits recommend. It's a straighter shot. And hopefully, if as long as you select the correct bore size of your master cylinder, everything should be cool. Okay, but we'll go ahead and actuate this. So it goes into bind right here at full pedal um, down, um, which will never happen. If your pedal goes all the way to the floor, you got bigger issues. So I just want to mention that that is, you know, this is probably the travel you're going to see right here, just an inch or two. Um, but right here, it's going to bind with the pedal rod uh, over here. Um, but that's that's the case with any. Uh, system because this angle is pretty much what they offer around seven degrees. So anyway, that's how that all looks um, So what I'll do is I'll swap Hydra Boost only for the T56 version and Hydra Boost version combo And I'm gonna hook this all up and I'll show you how that all works. Okay, so I swapped out the Bracket for the Hydra Boost T56 combo and of course, you know, I'm running the 7 8 Tilton master from uh, tick performance. So this is a direct replacement for an F body, but it has a larger bore for uh, more fluid flow. Okay. So so this is kind of kind of have to get this in here, get this threaded rod started here. Okay. So I got that started. Okay. I usually set, I'm going to set the pedal height the same as the brake, okay, this is snug, um, and then I'll just go ahead and put the Hydra Boost back on again and then we can get a closer, actually, let's get a closer look at how this thing functions uh, real quick. Okay, so one thing I noticed, uh, this bracket compared to what's on the market is if I just look. You know, if you look at this style bracket and where this mounting is relative to the center here, a lot of these seem to be either too far uh, to the center line or even further over. And what I have set up here, 
that would not make this rod straight to the bore of the master and put a side load on there. And people have been complaining about that. So I wanted to avoid that. So my push rod here, this guy here, is collinear with the, the bore of the master. Okay? And I get full stroke. So you can see how this stop works. It hits right here and it's adjustable. So I can limit to how much this clutch pedal goes in. And you can see how close this rod end is to all this material. And that's because I got two inches radius versus 2.4. So I'm gonna have better uh, a rod ratio. Okay, so this is super smooth. And if I look down into the, to the bore, I mean, this rod just goes in there super straight, no side loading. I have the correct pedal ratio. I got to stop. I mean, this just works out freaking great. So that's, that's that. All right, so here's the T56 Hydra Boost combo. Uh, everything works real nice here. Um, plenty of clearance for all the hoses. And then you can see here, um, this guy here, you can spin. Um, I spun it that way, and then it has plenty of clearance to that 90 degree uh, line. You can even go straight if you want. So uh, everything worked out really nice here and these brackets should be really inexpensive compared to what's out there and kits available. So this is this took a lot of effort, man, to get this geometry right, but I think it's gonna work out fantastic. Okay, something else we need to talk about is all this stuff that goes in here. So I have to pull it out and I'll show you why. Um, but basically how this goes together is you have this little push rod and see I had to grind it a little bit, so I'm gonna talk about that. Okay, so this washer deal goes in the pocket back there. Then you have this uh, spring. Okay, so that fits in there. And then you have this centering cone star washer. So this guy gets pushed all the way in there and it sits in a groove here. Okay, now in order to take this guy out, um, some of these higher drill boosters have a groove cut and what you do is you you push this guy in you know you can push this in with your fingers you're gonna have to tilt it and get one of these fingers to slide out of the groove and the guy will just pop right out unfortunately this one doesn't have it so what I did is I pushed it on an angle and I had to go in there with needle nose pliers and kind of bend these fingers a little bit and get it out of this groove to pop out okay so next what I did is you have to test the fit of this guy and to the master cylinder, you gotta make sure this push rod has a little bit of clearance uh, to the push rod. So I just, I just have a glove in here temporarily. And then what you gotta do is take your master cylinder and make sure that there is no, uh, that it rests flush on the flange. Okay, mine was, see this right here? It popped out about a 16th of an inch or so. So what that would do is it would prematurely push on this and it would drag the brakes. So you don't want that, right? So that's why I had to grind this. And what I did is I popped a little Play-Doh in here, just a little piece of clay or Play-Doh, pushed it in here, and then I jammed it in here once I got done grinding, okay? Took this off. I was able to peel the Play-Doh off and I, there was about a 20 to 30 thousandths thickness of Play-Doh, so that means I got 20 to 30 thou of a gap between here and the rod. So you're just gonna wanna take off a little at a time and make sure that this sits flush here and you have to take away from there if needed, okay? So now let's go ahead and assemble this guy because I'm, I'm done with it. And again, if you buy a reman unit, it's not gonna come with all this stuff and you can get it for 60 bucks which is crazy. So let's go ahead and let me put on some safety glasses. I have a feeling this sucker is going to fly out at me or something. All right, so we'll just jam this guy back in there. Can I see that? So to get it out, try to angle it. See how you can like kind of angle this? And you're going to have to work these fingers out of that groove. But see, that all, all the purpose of that is just to to center this rod. 
Okay, and then of course if you push on this, when you hit the brakes, this goes in, right? Or pull, pull, pops out. All right, so that's good. And then you can put your master on. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so your master goes on. Okay, I have a bungee here because this is really heavy for just the C-clamp that's on the... Okay, there we go. So that's that. That's the whole setup. Okay, so that's the whole setup. Uh, now I'll throw this all in the car um, so you can get a good look at it. So I just wanted to do it here on the workbench um, just so you get an idea. But man, I think I got this thing all figured out. Looks nice. It should work great. Awesome brakes to come. All right, so here's the whole setup. Looks good. We'll go ahead and throw this in the car so you can see it. Okay, here's the Hydro T56 bracket combo uh, installed. Um, one thing to note is I did have to modify the hole in the firewall just a little bit because it interfered with the rod. And, you know, for brackets that say, hey, no firewall modifications necessary, well, that's not going to work. It's not... It's not ideal. You need to modify it to get the rod straight. So that's that's what I had to figure out. So I'll go inside and show you what that looks like. So you can see I notched it right in the corner there. So right here I just had to open it and I, I opened it too much but you can see that you know the rod's gonna go right through here so I just had to clearance that a little bit. Um, have to figure out how to seal it but you know I don't think it should be too difficult. I got a couple ideas on that. Okay so here it is all installed on the car and here's kind of what it looks like um, and I put the the column uh, plate seal thingy in there uh, there is no foam on there right now it's just to locate the steering column so you can see clearances and whatnot um, so everything looks good and I was even able to stretch or uncoil the stock lines and it hits the master uh, so that's so that's looking good. I will massage those a little better. Um, the clamp over there, the bushing in there is shot, so I need to replace that. But overall, everything looks really good. Plenty of clearance for all the lines, uh, including the T56 Master and whatnot. Um, plenty, plenty of hood clearance and everything. So yeah, that looks really good. That's my throttle cable there. Um, so you can see that white thing there. I don't really like that So I might have to change that up or paint that thing or come up with a cap for that um, But overall, I mean who's gonna be sticking their head? way under the hood here and looking There I don't know maybe someone will but anyway um, I really like how it came out the clutch uh, Push rod is straight as an arrow everything works um, So yeah I think that is a very inexpensive solution compared to what's out there. Whether you want T56 only, Hydro Boost only, or the combo, Hydro Boost and T56. Okay, real quick, let me show you in here um, this column plate. I punched a one inch diameter hole right there, um, and it's exactly one inch. The center of the hole is exactly one inch over from the mounting hole. You see the mounting hole on the left there? Well, I moved over an inch, made my center mark, and punched a one inch hole, and it lined up perfect for this clutch rod. So you can see, perfect clearance. Now the problem is sealing this. So I wanna find a little boot um, to, to seal on this, like a little bellows, um, or some other option. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into what I can do here. Um, or maybe even foam on the back side of the T56 bracket just to compress up against this seal. So the, those are options. So we'll see uh, what I can come up with. Um, and remember I clearanced above here, so I have a little hole here. So what I'm gonna do is weld a little tab on here. I definitely cut out too much. Okay, so that's my fault. Um, so I have a piece of cardboard template. I'm gonna weld a little material onto this plate just to hide that and then I bought new foam sheet with adhesives of backing and I will cut cut out this and, and adhere it and then that'll seal everything up. Okay, a couple things I changed up here. Um, and this is specific to a clutch T56. I bought this pedal uh, in stock form. The radius was 2.4 inches. Um, 
and the length of it was 12. So that gave me uh, a pedal to rod ratio of less than six, and six is ideal. So if you take 12 divided by six, it's two inches. So what I did is I made this little jig two inches, and what did I do here? I put, you know, I cut this tab off, I put it here on here and here, and I have my two inches, and then I tacked it in place. So I moved it up 0.4 inches, and also I moved it this way. You can see this overhang, which I'll cut off. Okay, so it's tacked up, and due to that, I had to notch some of this um, thing here because it was interfering. And that's why it was down low, 2.4 inches. But again, the stock clutch pedal is for a mechanical stock clutch. We're doing a T56 Master, uh, so you need to get the right pedal to rod ratio, right? Um, or pedal ratio, whatever. So I went for two inches, cut out this metal here, which wasn't too much surgery um, and so forth. So what we'll do is I'll weld that up. And also I put a clutch stop. I'm gonna redo this bracket because this is all I had and I will redo it and, and show you what I have. But anyway, I needed a stop because I wanted to limit the travel. I don't wanna overextend the master cylinder and I don't wanna overextend the pressure plate fingers. So I just, I have an adjustment here. I have a turnbuckle here to set the clutch pedal height. I think that all looks really good. Here's kind of a better look. Um, I can still use the stock clutch switch, which I plan on doing, you know, for neutral safety or for start safety. And so you can see that that's just a little bit of material I hogged out and also uh, part of the brake uh, switch there, there, right there. So I'll have to reinforce that a little bit, but not too much fab work and it worked out nice. Okay, here's a closer look at the clutch pedal. And what I mean by pedal ratio is if you measure from here, the pivot point to the center of the pad here, it's 12 inches. So with a, a ratio of six to one, the distance between here and this pivot point should be two inches. Well, it was 2.4, so this was down about 0.4 inches, and also I shifted this guy to the left. This here was the spot weld or stake or whatever, so this guy was pretty much flush with this, so I moved it in. It just worked out better. And I can still use the same clutch switch and whatnot, so I got a couple tacks on here. What I'll do is I'll fully weld it here, here and up, and on the back side, and then I'm gonna cut this tab off, okay? So that's just a good uh, look at that. Again, here's a closer look at, I just made a little jig to, to position this exactly two inches. So don't mind the offset. The offset is not what's important. It's the radius from this point, okay? So here, I just made this little guy here. I f was able to fit this on here and here. I don't know why it's not fitting. There we go. And then I clamped it down and then I uh, gave it a few tacks. So let me go ahead and weld this up and then uh, uh, show you the rest. Okay, I wanted to give you a closer look on the modifications to this bracket. Uh, so I had to hog out this material here. And this is just to so I was allowed to move the pivot closer, the clutch rod pivot closer to the pivot of the clutch arm, so to increase pedal ratio, right? So this material needed to be removed. Now since I hogged this out, this bracket here uh, was a little flexy uh, due to the material removal. So what I did is I just came up with this little gusset this little piece here, I welded it in here, and this, these welds didn't come out great because it's thin, rusty sheet metal. But anyway, this is really stiff now, and that does not interfere with anything. So that's that. And then over here, um, this is a two by two uh, angle iron by eighth inch thick that I cut up and put in here um, as a clutch arm stop and it's adjustable. And this here is nothing more than a spindle off a toggle clamp. So if you go to like mcmaster.com and type in a uh, toggle clamp spindle, this is it. So this is 3 8 16. It's like two and a half, three inches long. It's way longer than it needs to, but it comes with the jam nut here. And then I welded a nut on the backside here so the clutch will uh, hit this. So I have a positive stop, which is adjustable, and I have the turnbuckle in here to set the height of the, the clutch, so I have a fully adjustable 
clutch pedal, which is awesome. All right, so here, I got a couple more parts on here. The engine's in, you can see how this all fits. Um, so everything looks good. Clearances to the wiper motor, valve cover, excellent. So the link is in the upper right. There's a wait list. If you want brackets like this, let me know. I can have more made. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna continue this build and get it on the road probably in a month or so. All right, that's it for this video, guys.